We bless your name today. We glorify you. We thank you for what you have done. And we thank you for what you are still going to do. And we pray, Lord, that your glory, your power, the anointing will come upon your people in Jesus' name. The fullness of blessing and the fullness of power and the fullness of anointing and the fullness of revelation and the fullness of your miracle working weapon that will come upon your people and do great mighty things will be unforgettable in Jesus name we're asking Lord that this day once again you reach your people at the point of our need so that Lord every burden taken away every load rolled away every mountain moving away and every sickness being healed every oppression cast off in jesus name we're asking lord that you give us understanding in your word and we pray lord that our hearts will rejoice before you and then we go back on with victory and that victory nobody will take away from us in jesus name but thank you because we know you have answered in jesus name we pray Joel chapter 2. In Joel chapter 2, we're reading from verse 25. Joel chapter 2. From verse 25. And I will restore unto you the years that the locusts have eaten, the canker worm, the caterpillar, and the palmer worm, my great army which i sent among you here the lord is talking to us about the restoration and as you look at this chapter you will see that there's going to be the fullness of the restoration in the physical in the natural in the spiritual in every way every area of your life and the lord said i will that means he makes up his mind, he's going to work. And as he has made up his mind, he's going to work. He wants you to be in agreement with the promise he has given. When he says, I will restore unto you. Begin to think about everything you have lost. Whether in your family, or your personal life, or in your business life, or professional life or spiritual life or ministerial life the calling of god is upon your life whatever you have lost the lord will bring back to you in jesus name matthew chapter 17 what do you mean from verse 11 matthew 17 verse 11 and jesus answered and said unto them elias truly shall first come and restore all things here the lord jesus gives us the assurance elijah will come and when he comes he'll restore all things and then in verse 12 but i say unto you that elias is come already that is the restoration is there already the promise and the provision for the restoration is there already and it says and they knew him not but they have done unto him whatsoever they listed likewise shall they also do to the son of man likewise shall also the son of man suffer of them then the disciples understood that he spake unto them of john the baptist if you look at verse 11 again and jesus answered and said unto them it has truly shall first come and restore all things but i say unto you the last has come already He's speaking about john the baptist from the time of the coming of john the baptist restoring all things restoration the fullness of restoration of all things has started already when you believe it, it starts in your life. Acts chapter 3. Acts chapter 3, verse 19. 
Repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord and he shall send Jesus Christ which before was preached unto you whom the heaven must receive until the times of the restoration of the recovery of the restitution of all things which God has spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets since the world began the Lord is telling us that the word there, restitution, actually is restoration. That is the Lord giving us everything that we lost in Adam. In Christ, all that is now available. And as you believe the Lord, and you are going to believe the Lord, restoration has come. The fullness of his restoration. And the fullness of the provision that Calvary has made available. Now it is yours and mine and ours in Jesus' name. Full restoration of an exceedingly powerful life. From today, as you look at the world and you wake up in the morning, and then you have your own personal, private faith clinic. And then you go to the promises of God. And all these promises of God, as you are taking your breakfast, you take the promises of God in. It has power. That day, every day, you are going to live a powerful life. And no enemy that meets you will be able to overcome you in Jesus' name. No temptation that comes against you will be able to overcome you in Jesus' name. Power has come. Your life is going to be different. And your attitude is going to be different. And your disposition, as you look at the word of God, every morning and you're building up yourself on your most holy faith, everything is going to be different in your life from this time. In Jesus' name, full restoration of an exceedingly powerful life. We're dividing the message to three parts. Number one, the great privilege of, rest of restored sons. The great privilege of restored sons number two the glorious power of renewed saints the glorious power of renewed saints number three the greater priesthood of replenished stewards the greater priesthood of replenished stewards number one the great privilege of restored sons the blessing has always been there. The power has always been there. The anointing has always been there. The glory of the Lord has always been there. And when we talk about restoration, restoration of blessing, restoration of privilege, restoration of power, how do you understand that? Well, the, rest of the power has always been there. God had the power, the same power he had, when the children of Israel were in Egypt and he brought them out and delivered them then the children of Israel moved away from God and it appeared the power was not being manifested anymore but the power was still there God was still where he was I am God I change not it is the restoration of the people of God that opened the door again and the blessing began to flow when it says, I will restore unto them all that the years of canker worm and palmer worm had made us to lose. The power was always there. Is the sons being restored? Look at Luke chapter 15. Luke chapter 15, we're reading from verse 17. And when he came to himself, he said, How many hired servants of my fathers are, have bread in all? And to spare, and I perish with hunger. I will arise and go to my father, and will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee, and I'm no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me one as one of your hired servants. And he arose and he came to his father. But when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. He received him 
He had compassion on him. He not just forgot all the things he had done wrong. Because he came back. Because he returned. He was restored. The father was always there. The inheritance was always there. The provisions were always there. And the blessings were always there. And the overflowing of the, her of the inheritance was always there. It was the restoration of the son that made the power, the privilege, the anointing, and the covering, and the clothing, and the new things to not be made available. And then it says in verse 21, And the son said unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight, and I am no more worthy to be called thy son. But the father said to the servants, Bring forth the best robes. The best robes have been there all the time. It's the restoration of the son that now restored the best robes unto him. And then it says, and put it on him. And put a ring on his hand. That ring that gave them the signature at that time. The seal at that time. The signature was there all the time. The ring was there all the time. The approval was there all the time. And we can say it's the restoration of the privilege, but it's actually the restoration of the son. And then it says in verse 22, And shoes on his feet. The shoes were there all the time. And bring hither the fatted calf. That fatted calf was there all the time. Is the son coming back? That thou made the fatted calf available for him. And for his friends to rejoice with him and kill it. And let us eat and, and be merry. For this my son was dead. And is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they began to be merry. Look at verse 2, 31. And he said unto him, The first son thou hast, thou art, thou art ever with me. And all that I have is thine. Restoration. All that I have is thine. Come in. Come home. The, first, the son, the first son, when he heard that the second son, the younger one, has come back, he stayed outside. And then the Lord went to him and said, Come, come in. It's available for you. All that I have is yours. But as long as you are staying outside, it will appear that the door is closed. It's you. Deny yourself. Deprive me yourself of what you ought to have. But if you will come in, and then you will see that everything I have belongs unto you, then you will find a full restoration. That's telling us there you're coming, coming to His grace, coming to His love, coming to the kingdom. And when there's a restoration like that, then. All of heaven's resources, all of heaven's provision, all of heaven's inheritance, all of the Father's power made available for you. We're looking at Second King, Second Corinthians, chapter six. Second Corinthians, chapter six. I'm reading from verse fourteen. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship has righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion has light with darkness? You know what the Lord is telling us? He's saying, as long as you are joined to those some believers, you'll never have your inheritance. You'll never have the provision in the kingdom. As long as you're joined to those in darkness, You'll never be able to have the provision of the Father. But it is when you obey the Lord and you come out of that darkness and come out of that occultism and come out of that sin and come out of that evil and come out of that evil association, affiliation, agreement. It is the coming out like that and becoming separate unto the Lord. That now you are a restored son. And for the restored son, all the blessings and the power, the privilege, everything restored unto you. In verse 15, what concord has Christ with Belial? Or what part has he that believes with an infidel? When you come into partnership with the infidel, you lose your right in the kingdom. 
You lose the provision in the kingdom. You lose your inheritance in the kingdom. And you lose the joy of fulfillment in the kingdom. But it's when you separate from the infidel. The infidel is the one that say, I, I, says, I don't believe. I don't believe the word of God. I don't believe every judge, every teaching of the world. Maybe he believes a part, from little, little parts, some, you know, in a superficial way. But an infidel. And he says, you don't join with them. And what agreement has the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them. And I will be their God and they shall be my people. Wherefore, come out from among them. It is when you obey the word of the Lord like that. There is a restoration of the son. And that restoration of the son restores all the blessings unto you. You know, I, we need to emphasize this so that you don't think that maybe God is weak. It's always powerful. God is always mighty. Whenever a problem arises in your life and then it appears, oh, what's God doing? Maybe God is not able to do that. He's able, always able. It's a restoration. God is not going to move. You are the one to move. God is not going to change. You are the one to change. And when we talk about restoration, you come into the place where the blessing can flow freely into your life. From this day, you will turn, you will change, you will be restored, and the blessings will be taught to you in Jesus' name. Did I hear an amen? amen? Wherefore, come out from among them. Don't be the gang of those uh, smokers and drunkards. And the night club uh, people anymore don't use your talent in the night club the talent to serve and the talent to play music and the talent to sing the talent to be happy and make others happy entertain don't use that in the night club come out from among them and don't use your talent to train the people who are serving the devil. There are some people that have talents of this and this and that. And maybe they are not in the nightclub themselves. But then they offer their services, their skill to the people who are going to use that skill in the nightclub. Come out from among them and then out of the gang, out of the occultism out of the assembly of the sorcerers out of the people that are doing evil those who are living in darkness you come out from among them and then the lord says in verse 17 and be ye separate don't feel inconvenient because you are in the minority and you are separate and you are detached from them and you are a distinct, distinguished child of God. And then it says, Touch not the unclean thing. Don't even touch anything that will make you unclean, defile you. A lot of things uh, people see on the internet nowadays, and the pornography we used to talk about in magazines is now on the internet, and almost everybody will be able to see whatever they want to see. When you see it accidentally, you are maybe you are, you know, looking for something educative and something that you need uh, to just plug into there. And then all these other things come up. If you don't concentrate on them, you are not guilty. But when you are not searching for them and looking for them, putting your mind, your attention on them, touch not, they are clean thing. And I will receive you. The Lord will receive us. And will be a father unto you. And ye shall be my sons and my daughters, says the Lord Almighty. That's the restoration. The restoration that brings the privilege into our lives. And the restoration that makes us to know that now the blessings of the Lord will flow. You will become an heir of God and a co-heir joint here with the Lord Jesus Christ. We're looking at Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8, we're reading from verse 14. 
for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit beareth witness with the Spirit that we are the children of God. After you have repented, after the grace of God has turned your life around, and then he has transformed you. And now you have a transformed life. A transparent life. A triumphant life. You are no more falling and rising, falling and rising into temptation, into evil, into sinning. Now your life is new and renewed. It says the Spirit of God bears witness with our hearts that we are the children of God. In verse 17, and if children, then heirs, heirs of God, join each heirs with Christ. If so be that ye suffer with him, that ye may be also glorified together. It will happen to you. I'm looking at Philippians chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2, verse 14. Do all things. How many things? How many things? Do all things. And in the morning, midday, evening, night, do all things. 